Spirit is still alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Today, Lord, we're going to stand in your word. We call the entrance your word. Give us light. We're going to use that light as a guide to our part and alarm to our feet. If your church must grow, your people must know what thou said, Lord. Today, Lord, we ask for receptive heart and listening ear. And we thank you, Lord, in advance what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God. Be seated. And turn your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. We're using these few verses at the 12 inches to make our foot. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And see what Paul is giving credit for writing this book. From the book of Romans to the book of Hebrews. 14 letters or epistle that Paul wrote. And we saw how he started his ministry on a very destructive course. And he met the head of the church. Who are thou? He said, Jesus, whom thou prosecuted. And we look at that, and now you could start a very destructive. All of us, before we came here, we was over there. And we was going to hell at a one-way ticket, going to hell until somebody told us about Jesus Christ. And the person who tell us convinced us that this is the way, the truth, and the life. First Corinthians chapter 9, look at verses 1 and 2. First Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Are not you my works in the Lord? If I am not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you, for the seal of my apostleship are you in the Lord. So if anybody say otherwise, I mean, you, you can see the work that we did is not just talking out and saying nothing but doing something about it. We look at our Lord and Savior, he's the 12 inches, because he's not going to tell us something that we couldn't do. He didn't give us wings that we can fly like a bird. He didn't do that. He didn't give us gills that we can live in the sea like a fish and extract the oxygen. But he did say, the work that I do, shall you do also, and greater works than this shall you do. Amen. Can you see that? So if he said we can do it, we can do it. Because he's the head, and we're the body. And if he said he can, we can do it, then we can do it. And you go to God and put him through the test. Stand on his words. And I think Mary put it well, whatsoever he said unto you, do it. Amen. Amen. So look at those two verses again. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are you not my work in the Lord? If I'm not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you. For the seal of my apostleship are you in the Lord. Look at Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. And see what God is saying to us there. Ephesians chapter 4. We look at when he started up earlier, he called them and he named them who he gave it to. Amen. Amen. Jesus is our Lord. He's my Lord and Savior. Now if he's your Lord, he's my Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Ephesians chapter 4, let's pick it up with the 11th verse. He gives some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. What for? For the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the status of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carry out every wind of doctrine and slay of men and cunning cry whether lying with to deceive. Look at the 15 verse. Speaking the truth in love, we go up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So he give it to us. You couldn't go to school to get it. He's going to decide who wanted it. He gives some apostle, some prophet, some he give it. And you have to keep it before you all the time. You go to God and ask, did he give it to you? Do you have it? I well, want to see that in the process of time. Look at these verses again. He gives some apostles, some prophet, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure and the standard of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carry out every wind of doctrine and slay of men and cunning craft away by the lion to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. First Corinthians chapter 12. He give us these things. He equip us to stand in these offices. Hallelujah. Am I an apostle? We ask the question. First Corinthians chapter 12, get something to write with and something to write on. Our Lord is saying to us in his holy, written, precious word. I don't take these words lightly. 
because this comes from the throne room of Almighty God. Start with the Father God, through His Son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Ghost, the angels behind ranked on us, then the ministry gift, then the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, pick it up at verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, pick up at verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gift, brother, or not have you ignorant, you know that you were Gentiles, carried in the dumb idols, even as you were led. Well, if I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a cursed, and that no man can say Jesus Lord but by the Holy Ghost. There are diversity of gift but the same Spirit. There are differences of administration but the same Lord. There are diversity of operation but the same God which work it all in all. But the manifestation of spirits given to every man to profit with all. For the one is given by the Spirit a word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another workings of miracle, to another prophecy, to another discerning of Spirit, to another diverse kinds of tongue, to another the interpretation of tongue. Look at the 11th verse. Put your finger on the 11th verse. Look at the 11th verse. But all these work in one and the same spirit, divided into every man severally as he will. So it doesn't operate all the time. As he will. He is the one you could make the request. He could say yes. He could say no. He could do it. He's the boss. These gifts operate as the spirit will. These gifts are divided into three parts. Gifts of utterance, revelation gifts, and the power gift. They operate as he will. Three of them say something. The gifts of utterance, prophecy, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Those are the gifts of utterance as he will. Somebody ever made God told me this, and God told me that that's not true. It doesn't work like that. Then you have the revelation gift, word of wisdom, word of noise and discerning of spirit, their revelation give as the spirit will. You're going to need that if you're going to operate as an apostle. Then you have the power gifts, workings of miracle, special faith and gifts of healing. They operate as the spirit will. So these nine gifts divided into three parts, three of them say something, three of them reveal something, and three of them do something as the spirit will. You don't have in your pocket, I go, it doesn't work like that. He may say yes, he may say no. Or he may not even answer. Because sometimes you're going to deal with somebody who is not even saved. Living some child of the devil, you're going to get them healed for what? To go and sell more drugs or to make more trouble out there? For what? He have to make that decision. And you ask him if he's going to release it or not. So we're looking at from 1990 to 2020 and see what God did with us. Now we started in Elton Street in one house there. This house had at its capacity 60 people in that house. Now we're getting no federal, no state or city money, none, zero. I can say this loud and clear, none of them give us any money. Every time somebody come by, some expert come by, they can write grant, we never get a yellow, what kind of zippelli? They <laughs> never give us any. And that house, you have to feed that house with everything coming. You just think about these people, these people, Brother Antoine, these people have zero. They don't have a toothbrush, they don't have toothpaste, they don't have nothing. So they come in the door, you have to get everything for them. Whatever they came in with, we don't want that in the house. We want it out of the house. And you just think about people coming to the house, bro, pastor. You have to get toothbrush, toothpaste, clothes, back in Elton Street, just men. And feed at least twice a day. You just think, well, what is that like there? You're getting no money. These people come from the street. They have, they have nothing in their pocket. So you have to supernaturally find a way to feed that house. Because you don't take them from here and put them here. And don't have nothing. You have to give them something better. Make sure the food that you're cooking is a very high standard. Make sure the barber that's cutting here is a good barber he you knows to cut here. Make sure the people who are washing the clothes, and we have everything have to be at a high standard because you, you want to give them a reason to stay. It take them a little while before they start listening yeah. to the word of God. Amen. So you have to have good food, a nice bed for them to sleep on. You have to have something good for them, and you have to keep telling that you love them. Yeah. Things that they never hear before. Yeah, you know, so you have to have that. That's in the universal. And from that environment there, we moved to Blake One, which was right across the street here. And within no time, that house is full up. Now remember, you're getting no federal, state, or city money. You have two houses. And you have to pay all that, make it work. Everything that comes in, every, where these clothes coming from, supernaturally. Where are you getting food to feed these two houses? Now think about that. In all that environment, we move across here. This is Blake Two. You just think about that. I mean... No federal, no state, no city money. 
and we're going by day to day, believing God to operate and a miracle for us. Like I heard one time this guy from Israel was saying that during the um, Palestine war, the very turbulent it, at that time in the year, the 68, <laughs> and so during that very turbulent time there, and he was in an interview, and the interview asked him if he believed in miracle. He said, no, we don't believe in miracle, we depend on a miracle. So we don't believe in miracle, we depend on a miracle from day to day to feed that house. And then all that go in it is no fighting and make sure all that take place and the word have to go forth every single day, twice a day. And from that environment, we moved to Sada Avenue, four apartments, two floors. Again, that house is full. We start taking women over there in Sada Avenue. Then we moved to Riverdale. That's five houses we have. Now, these are not our house. We were renting these houses. From that, now we moved to St. Mark's, two factory floors, 5,000 square feet each floor. Now, we have a, you have a population now in excess of 300 people. Let me see you feed that. In. All that go with it, the, the, the rent and the light and the gas, all these things go to it. You just think about how that goes. Look at this picture here. In Genesis, what's this? Five houses. Everybody come in. Nobody have no money. Forget it. They come from the street. Some of these places they call churches, they're social club. They have people working. And the people pay the tithes and different things. Some of that people connected with Wall Street and could write grand thing. We didn't have that. Everybody come in here, need toothbrush, need toothpaste, need deodorant, need socks, need everything to, to, to cut the hair and to make life work. Look at this picture here in Genesis. Am I an apostle? Genesis chapter 13. And look at this picture. Hallelujah. He give you gifts. These gifts operate as the spirit will. And my orders, Pastor Foster, is not to refuse anybody. The house is never full. You're not to tell anybody, come to any of the houses that we full. We're going to make room, we have to transfer them to our next location, but nobody's to be refused. That's my orders. Everybody comes, going to white people, black people, young people, old people, good people, bad people. Bring them in. Amen. Genesis chapter 13, let's pick it up with the 14 verse. The Lord said unto Abraham, after Lot had separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art, northward, southward, eastward, westward. All the land which thou see to thee will I give it to thy seed forever. I'll make thy seed as the dust of the earth, and a man can number the dust of the earth, so shall thy seed be numbered. Arise and walk through the land and the length of it, and the breadth of it, I'll give it unto thee. Abraham removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in the Hebron, and built an altar unto the Lord. Well, this is a picture to see here. Now notice, he's going to give it to him when Lot leave. Why? Because Lot means veil, Lot means covering. So the minute you move that covering, that covering of religion, denomination, customs, and tradition, you move that, you're going to see far. And you can see all these houses, you can see people who need help coming into the house. And you don't know, Brother Antoine, you don't want to have to tell this guy, listen, Brother Weefer, you don't know what his situation is. You don't know if he's in the last straw, he could go and commit suicide. You don't know what, you, you, you're always in your mind. And sometimes it's not so much for the needy, but the greedy could get what's really not theirs. So you don't ever want to tell somebody that woman come to the door and you don't know to say, when do you say enough is enough? You don't know what the situation is. We pick up Lauren with her mother and four kids sleeping. How, I mean, how you as a man of God create some environment that you can take her. What are you going to do? A young girl right across the street, you're pregnant, six, seven months pregnant, the mother put her on walking the street. And I asked some of the ladies in the community, I did with her that a sleepy night, I'll keep her in the day. No. 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 Little girl pregnant, walking up and down here, not properly dressed in the winter. I say, you know what? We're going to take this girl in here. We take her across there in Blake One. We, it makes us very uncomfortable. With this female, is the floor have about 40 men or so, 40, 45 men. We have to make a little cubicle like this and put her to sleep behind there. 
I mean, you talk about the entire house is disrupted because you have to make sure that she get herself together and sleep before everybody else could do what they have to do. She have to get up first in the morning, do what she have to do, and get out of the house before the house could function. Somebody's daughter. And I, mean, I couldn't understand it, I didn't understand it. We take her to Brookdale and they give us a letter to take us to King County. King's going to give a letter to take us to Woodhall. They just kick it all around the place. Our nurse said, we didn't ride her doing that. Nobody wanted to be bothered with her because she didn't come for prenatal care. And all, blah, blah. So we kept her behind there until she gave birth to the baby. And her grandmother took the baby. That, if I see that girl, I wouldn't know who she is. So that kind of environment you're living in, when do you say no? Or how could you say no? That child probably today might be about 15 years old or so because it was sent over there. So you operate in that environment, as far as you can see from the east to the west to the north and the south, I'm going to give it to you. Well, now we're going to leave them and we're going to stop renting, we're going to buy. Now we have all these buildings, six million dollars you're going to buy. Where are you going to get the money from? Well, <coughs> look at this. Luke 6, Luke 6, is Luke in the Bible? Yes. Am I an apostle? We're asking the question. Hallelujah. Now we have six buildings of him. No, everybody come in, but a Patrick, they don't got no money, they're, they're street people. They come in from prison, from mental asylum, cell, drug, they have nothing. So they have no, no welfare to get nothing at all. So you have to find a way to feed them and feed them well. Always look at them, Pastor Foster. That could have been my son. That could be my brother. That could be my sister. That fall by the wayside. Always open up and look at them like that. Because you don't know who's a good trickster scheme. You don't know who really need help. So my order is to take everybody in. Luke 6. They're listening to me out there. All of them listening to me. They know it's true. You said something happened in Alaska. This happened right across the street over there and right here. Luke 6. Hallelujah. Look at the 38 verse. Look at the 38 verse. Don't know where the next meal coming from, but you're taking people in. Six houses to maintain with a population over 200. Definitely over 200. Because the fire department come in Elton, in Elton Street and say, you have six people inside here. If there's a fire, how are these people going to get out? Where's the egress? The health department said there's too many people breathing each other's face and they, they imply that somebody has some contagious disease here and you're playing with a head disaster. Huh? The building department said this is a wooden structure and these amount of, this building could collapse. So we're going to start writing up citation to get you out of here. But then, the fire department, building department, the health department, now the police department come. And they're looking for you, want to check you out and see who has warrant in the house. And make everybody in the house very good. They might have done something in the, in the past life, so everybody's... Ah, then the church, the part that hurts the most was the church. Not a single person come from the church right across and come across and say, well, that's somebody, brother. We only had men in Elton Street. That is something. I had a holy dislike for church people. You know, the police department, you can understand they're doing their job, the building department, but the church across the street. Luke 6, and look at verse 38. Give shall be given back to you good measures, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Men give unto your bosom. For the same measure to meet with it shall be measured. How much you giving? How much you giving? You take up somebody's son, somebody's daughter on the street. How much you giving? I've never had a person come to the mission and give me a dollar. Never. I could say this loud and clear on radio and television. Never give me a penny. They come in here, zero. You have to do everything for them. See that the hair is cut. See that the hygiene is up to standard. Everything has to be taken care of. You just think about it. But as you give, supernaturally, where are you going to get the money for that? But in that madness, we're going to buy a building of 60,000 square feet for $1.5 million. Give, it shall be given back to you. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, running. And now we get this opportunity and God opened these doors supernaturally. And they give us a 30-year mortgage 
we paid off in three years. Three years paid off. I have all these people there. And you have that house of feed three times a day. I could say this loud and clear on television. Am I apostle? And you be the judge. You do. You can't handle your house with half a dozen people in it. Some of those social cross called church, they have people working with you know, the, the congregation, rich people, and they, they're connected with the city, and, they, and they're getting big dollars. We don't get no big dollars. So no, I can say this loud and clear. Nobody give us nothing. God have to get all the praise, all the glory belong to him. Every piece belongs to him. But you can see the lives that was changed because of that from 1990 to 2020. We estimated over 50,000 people come to the nation. Dr. Chuka, even if we say 10,000 paying the food, 40,000 is a lot of people. <laughs> Mr. Debbie, even if you say 20,000 said they were just playing games, they just come here to get a bread and a place to sleep. 30,000 people is a lot of people. And we have the document to prove it. All that came in the Elton Street, Blake, one, Blake, we have the document to prove it. That is something. And these people eat three meals a day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You should see that menu on the wall. You should see that menu on the wall, Doc. You don't just cook anything. No, you have to follow that menu. If it called for eggs or pancake or whatever that menu called for, that's what you have to keep. You get into trouble if you figure out from that menu. If it's fish, if it's beef, if it's chicken, whatever that menu called for, you have to keep that, that menu change every month we turn it around. But you have to keep that menu there. Supernatural. We never, never out of food. Give it shall be given back to you. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Men going to give unto your bosom. Philippians chapter 4. Never out of food. Am I an apostle? You be the judge. Going to some hole in the wall called church. You should have to feed that much people three times. Let me see you make it. The food budget alone is 10,000 a week. Multiply that by 52 weeks, let me hear what you come up with. You went to school, let me hear what you come up with. That's just the food. The mortgage on 326 is 10,000 a month. Let me see you come up with, that's just the mortgage. No federal, no state, no city. Philippians 4, hallelujah. Put your finger on the 13th verse. Put your finger in the 13th verse. Jesus. Look at that 13th verse. I can do all things. Well, how come, wait a minute, wait a minute. How come you're not doing it? Mr. Natalie, how come you're not doing it? You could do all things. Well, all things is all things. He didn't deliver. He, he didn't. He said all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. How come you're not doing all things? Well, when you read a scripture like that, no matter what comes, the food is going to come in. I could say this loud and clear. That house never ordered food. Never wanted to sit, especially in the wintertime. Dr. Chuka, especially in the wintertime, that house is over 400, definitely. And you have to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Never ordered. And all that make the house work, the laundry to keep those, those linens clean, one day is the fifth floor laundry, one day is the fourth floor laundry, then the second floor. After all those things have to be clean. Then the barbers and the, and the third floor cutting those hairs every day. That's their job. Those who are styling the women here every day. I give the men 24 hours to get your act together. You have 72 hours to get your act together. Within 72 hours, that whole person has to change. That nails have to be taken care of. Your hair has to be done. Everything has to be changed. You have 72 hours, you have 24 hours. You better have it done. Your hair have to be cut, those clothes have to be changed, everything 24 hours. Let me see you do that. No federal, no state, or city money. Hallelujah. Huh? Hallelujah. I can do all things Hallelujah. through Christ Hallelujah. who strengthened me. Hallelujah. All things through Christ. Hallelujah. But if you can do all things through Christ, they can cut their hair, they can wash their clothes, they can feed them, they can house them, and they can give them the word of God. You're going to hear about Jesus Christ from day one. That Jesus Christ is Lord, whether you like it or not, you're going to hear about Jesus Christ from day one. You're going to hear that. And now, now we're going to start buying buildings. So we buy 326, now we're going to buy, this is the next building we bought. We bought this building here from a guy, an Italian guy, Frank. 
And some guys across the street selling drugs right across. Eh? They're not in chain. They're still playing the fool over there. How many know what I'm talking about? And he said, I don't want to have nothing to do with these people with the drugs and things. I'm going to sell it to you, the church. And we bought this building. We bought it close to cash. Now, how you do that? We show how we do that. When we go to retreat, we show how we, do, how we raise the money. Give me money. He paid off within a few months. You're dealing with scrap metal and all things like that. We show how, that, how we raise the money. Then from this building, now we're going to buy 964 where we are over there. That's the second building we bought. And now this building that's bought for buying building is bought to house our people. That's what it's bought for. It's not bought because we're buying building, no. We had two couples living here, two married couples living here. Then we buy 964. That's for the top, that's for the big people at the ministry. That's for Charlie Cosby, listen to me. That's for Charlie Cosby and the Pastor Leslie, the Russells and the Davids. They're living over there. You have two three-bedroom apartment over there and two two-bedrooms apartment. Those are the top people in the ministry. They've been with me from day one. So they get the big apartments. Life in London. <laughs> Life in London. Those are the big people. And from there now, we buy in uh, 1137 Dean Street. There's an apartment there. There's four, three, four floors. That could put about four couples up there to live up there. From there, we move to 1237. 1137, 1237, 1239. So that's three buildings we have in on um, Dean Street. So we have this, 964, three building on Dean Street. Now we move to 95 Lex. Big building up there. 50,000 uh, 50, square feet. No, that was about, yeah, 50,000 square feet. Massive building. There. That we do outreach up there and so on. And we're going to be teaching something else. Some people, you know, some people, I, maybe God called me to do this, I different. We go over there to start the building. We bought this building. Our building, we bought this building. The politicians there said that we didn't tell them we was coming in the community. So Charlie Cosby said, this is our building. We didn't ask you for no money. And I mean, she make our life miserable. She's in the city council. She called my friend, Daryl, who's in the state assembly. I want you to do me a favor to cut off rev I'm helping hands funding. So Daryl said, we don't fund them. I want you to do me a special favor. Daryl's father was in the Congress. I want you to do my special favor. Ask your father if you could cut off our funding. Black lives matter. Yes. How you like that, brother Antoine? Yes. We bought the building. We, we, you should look around and say, look at these black brothers. Look yes. what they're doing. Yes. We didn't tell her. She called the police department nurse. They called us and said, we're manufacturing drugs in the building. They said, well, I said but you know, love will always beat hate. Yes. Love will always beat hate. Yes. We open up the community to them and we give out nice stuff up there. Long lines coming to get our stuff. And when that didn't work, she went to the newspaper with us. Helping hands, not welcome in bed style. We need culture, not a cult. Second page, turn page in the major newspaper. So we went to Albany. I want to bring the pictures from Albany. If you want to see me up in Albany, I open up in prayer up in Albany. I'm an apostle, man. <laughs> And, you, and I will encourage some of you to go up to, to Albany. The state building is uh, the Senate. Yeah. Yeah. The Senate building, it looked like something made out of gold. The assembly, mm, but the Senate building, I would invite everyone to go up and see that building. It's like it made out of gold. So I went there and they asked me to come and open up in prayer. So I have the pictures. Of it. Wonderful scene up there. I'll bring the pictures to you all to see. So we met her up in there, Albany. So this is Santa taking me around. He said, um, this is Reverend Randy from, um, uh, his name ring a bell. <laughs> well, don't tell me your spirituality doesn't come to the surface. I just walk, uh, Dr. Sugar, I just walk away. Make our life, I mean, you should say, look at these black brothers, what they're doing. They didn't ask for a cent, what they're doing. Make our life miserable. What? We survive. So 95 Lex is on the building we buy. Then we move to the complex. The complex, that's 69,000 square feet. Complex. Then we move to 197, windows are heaven blessed. From 100 block to the next little block. Buy all this, with no fraud or money. I can say this loud, am I an apostle? You be the judge. And from there now, we bought this building right here on here in Blake, 30 something apartments. That's to put our people, they buy this building to put our people. They're not just, just to buy and build, you know, to put our people, because who's going who gonna to rent them back? So we buy this building, so we buy that there, then we buy Flatland. Flatland was like the, the top of the line, you know, down in Flatland, it's Canarsie. 
So the, the Archie Harris and them will live over there, the Smithies and George will live over there. That's, that's the expensive apartment, a building over in Canarsie. Can you see that? Yes. Philippians 4, look at the 19 verse. So we buy 662, 964, 1137, 1237, 1239, 95 lakhs, the complex, 197, 536, and flat land. How many buildings that is? You know what the real estate value of that is? You know what this is? Here's, you know what the real estate value of all those buildings are? The big ones is 326, 95 lakhs, the complex, 197. Those are the big ones. 69,000 square feet. The others are houses. 1137, 1237, those are houses out there. Flatland is a house. This is house, of course, and over Rutland Road, but those are the big ones. You know what the real estate value that is? With no federal money. Am I an apostle or what? Yes. Philippians 4, look at verse 19. My God. Woo! Yes. Well, you see, we had to get rid of all of this. Somebody said, why? If I keep all those buildings, I'll be like a landlord going all over the place, picking up this and boiling this and that, and will take me away from this world and all those things. We just showed them how to do it. And those people grow up to become big boys and now they can handle themselves. Yeah. You see what I say? Yeah. But you keep these 20 buildings and so you'll be already fixing this and fixing that over and all over the place. And you know, no. They grow up all, the, all these big boys, they grow up Russell's and the Dennis and the David and the Smolly and all them. They grow up to become big boys now. Let us stand on your own feet. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll be like a land running all over the place. Yeah and take you away from this. You see? So you have all those things there. Look at verse 19. My God shall supply all my needs. How much your needs? All. Now he didn't say once, he said your needs. He supply all your needs. And we never, I can say this be front this. How many of people viewing out there? We never run out. Amen. Never run out of food, never run out of space. I mean, on and on and on. Never had fight in the house, never had to call the police, never. We had three precincts to deal with, the 75th, the 73rd, and the 67th. Never had to call them for fight. Something wrong in the house. I was over at the shelter there on Friday. Police had gone, two police had gone on there. Had to put metal detector. We never do that. No. Metal detector people never, 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 never had to search people like that. They come in, they search you one time, dead with all your foolishness, but you could hear. Never, never call the police. You see, am I not an apostle? So you see that. So look at it. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. How rich is he in glory? You see, you're just talking, you don't do it. You're just talking, you don't do it. If he riches in glory, how rich is Jesus in glory? He come from a city that his streets made out of gold. Not paved with gold, made out of gold. How rich is he in glory? His city is 1,500 miles long, 1,500 miles wide, and a mile high. It's made out of gold. The pearly gates, the foundation made out of special metal, emerald and ruby and diamond, sapphire, carbuncle. Special metal make up the foundation of the city. He, his riches in glory. How rich is he in glory? The minute you put it in God's hands and you stay in the things of God like this, he never lets you down. He never fails us. Then we leave to that, now we're going into outreach. Monday, the Bronx, Tuesday, Staten Island, Wednesday, Manhattan, Thursday, Queens, Friday, Brooklyn, Saturday, Jersey, two cities in New Jersey. And thank God we went to New Jersey, that's where I get my wife. Amen. Many others come from New Jersey. We had a whole bus of people coming from Jersey. But just think about it. And Brother Patrick, we never, never, never have any accident. These 26-foot trucks are something else. It's a service. Those trucks have to be full up with food every time it goes out. Will you get in a truck full of food to take to the Bronx? And then tomorrow is Staten Island. Then is Manhattan on Wednesday. Every time that truck leaves, it's packed with food. They don't go out there to 26 foot and pack with food. To go to Jersey, will you get in a truck full of food six days a week to take it out? That truck has to be packed with food from the top to the bottom. This is 26 foot trucks. We buy two brand new trucks from the factory. To do what, Sister Debbie? to give out food. Well, we just read in the book of Luke, give, it shall be given back to you, good measures, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Look how much you're giving out. Brother Patrick, that's, that's 26 for the truck, had to be full up of food on Monday, we're ready to go to the Bronx. 
As they come back in, they load up for, for Staten Island on Tuesday, then for Wednesday, then for Thursday. Where the food is coming from? Pack with food. You have that much to give out, and then you have to take care of your house. Give, it shall be given back to you, good measures, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Look at the book of Psalms. Hallelujah. Brother, brother, sister in the Lord. And we could say this loud and clear and read and tell them nobody, my, my spiritual children listening to me, they're out there, they know. Psalm number 34. The reason is you don't read your Bible, you don't call on God. I say, God, my, through your son, Jesus Christ, we should never run out of food in this house. Every day this truck going, no accident, never had any accident. Never, 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 never had any accident. And this city, this metropolis that we live in here, this city could be something else. Are oh, we free from it. We're free from all accidents. Psalm number 34. Put God in remembrance. Find yourself a Bible in church and put him in remembrance. My God will supply all my needs. Never. But I'm trying, where you get in clothes for all these people? Every day, people coming to ministry. Everybody have to have their clothes changed. They're here to be styled. The amount of deodorant and toothpaste and care packages you have to have, everybody have to get one. They have to be there. 24 hours, you better be ready in 24 hours. You have 72 hours to get your act together. You come down to see sanctuary, you don't know homeless. You don't know homeless people here. This is a ministry. Amen. This is not a shelter. This is a ministry. Amen. This is a ministry. You're here, you have to be groomed. You're smelling well. Your hygiene have to be taken care of. There are three people on the floor. The floor leader, he's the boss of the floor. Second in command, he have to make sure that all of you are well dressed. If not, he's in trouble. If he get off the floor, he's not properly dressed, he's in trouble. Why you let him off the floor like that? Then the third in command, he have to make sure that the floor is neatly, all the beds are made up, everything is intact, all the soap and toothpaste, everything is ready, all the, everything is ready. He had to make sure the floor is neat and clean. That's the third in command. But the first in command have to enforce those laws. We have staff meeting tell you what you're supposed to do. Don't you let somebody come off the floor like that. He's supposed to be well-dressed, his hair groomed and so on. The guy who was in charge of this house here, Pop Williams, I mean, he was something else. His men, I mean, look like Hollywood. And he boasts about his men. Rev, look, 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 my man, look. Everybody's groomed. Well, he have to be groomed. His shoe have to be neat, polished. I mean, he was something else. There was good too, but he was good with a big G. Good. Psalm 34, look at verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamping round about them that fear him, and he delivered them. So wherever they go, the angels in camp. So that's why the truck could go out all the time. You see, what prayer you saying when the truck leaving? From January to December? You, you say this, angels are ministering spirits sent to minister for. They come to work for you. But you don't tell them what to do. Protect these trucks. Let there be peace in this house here. No fighting in this house. Never, never had any fighting in this house. Never. Certain prayer you have to say, that's something else. But the truck is leaving here. Angels are standing there doing nothing. You don't tell them what to do. Angels, the Lord, encamp it. That the word encamp mean is like, like a sentry with a boot. You know, like if you come into some place, they have a sentry, you have to go through the sentry and he check you out and so on. But that word encamp means like a sentry with a boot. And he there to protect them wherever they go, make sure nobody come into their environment, so to speak. Angels, the Lord, encamp it. Angels, the Lord, encamp it. So you could afford to have these ministries go out, buy all these buildings, and take care of all these people coming in. What about the summer youth? Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 27. One year we had 775 summer youth. I want some of you who went to school. Some of you kids go to school playing the fool on your phone all the time. Do the maths. You have 775 kids. Each of them getting $15 an hour working four days a week. Let me hear how much money that is. Just take one kid and multiply him by 700. One kid working four days a week, he getting $15 an hour, working six hours a day. 
He's working four days a week. Let me see the budget. That's some of you. That's some of you. 775 some of you. Each kid working four days a week. They're working six hours a day. They pay $15 an hour. Six hours, yeah, well, six hours a day. Let me see the match. Let me see the match. That's just, some, that's just some of you. You finish with that, now you're going to have the street fee and so on and, and things like that. But what about the turkey giveaway? There'll be enormous for a thousand turkeys. Forget that, you know how much for 10,000 toys? So, Sir Hazel, how much for 10,000 toys? I know. I know. Yeah, I know. They're wrapping toys for two months, all in November into December, they're wrapping toys. The separated toys, the boy toys, the girl toys, the generic toys, and all that. Thing. You just think about that. The first time we went to Richie, we went to Prayer Mountain. Brother, you know about expense. The entire house went. Most of the house, few say, but Prayer Mountain. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at here in um, Psalm. Acts. What I say? Oh, Psalm 27. Psalm 27. Amen. Psalm 27. Jesus. Psalm 27. Pick it up at verse 1. How could you do this? Am I an apostle? Jesus. And look at something else, Sister Colleen. I do it single-handed. When I say single, I God with me. But all alone. When I say all alone, you know, forget it. Don't call God and tell you everything. He's with me now. But all alone. It takes years before you develop these guys and they become graduates, so to speak. You have to go through a level system. And the level system could take about a year to go through the level system. And depends on how you go through the level system, you know, they could put you to do something inside of Saul. I would take two or three years before they reach a point where they could put in charge to go outside. But all in the formative years, I'm in charge of everything. And the houses here, doc, they don't know where I'm going to come. Everybody have to be shotgun straight because they don't know where I'm going to shop. Here, dear Elton Street, they don't know where I'm going to shop. Everybody have to be shotgun straight. Because you don't know where, what house I'm going to come in. And you have to be there. Psalm 27 verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Well, you know, when you say this prayer, you read this psalm, you don't care who come in the house. You care what kind of criminal background, what kind of melt and say they come in. You don't care who it is because you're saying this. And you see the forces activated for you. Because you're not scared because take anybody coming. We don't care who it is. Take them in. And so you read this here. The Lord is the light of my, and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked eat my enemies and my foes came up to, uh, to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though it, the horse should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise up against me, in this will I be confident. What will be confidence about wanting a desire? Huh? You're confident. You're confident. So anybody come in the house, you, you're not scared of nobody. As bad as they want to come from organized crime, they come from this, they come from black Muslim and all the uh, Rastafari and whatever. We don't care what it is. No fighting in this house. You manage this house. Keep it like that. Can you see it? The book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 26. Jesus. We have a few minutes ago, let's use it wisely. Am I an apostle? Jesus is Lord. We have a lot to share with you still, my friend. Isaiah chapter 26. Is Isaiah in the Bible? Amen. All right, amen. That is something, Pastor Steve, to buy brand new trucks from the factory in excess of $75,000 for one. To do what? To give out food. Well, that doesn't make sense. But then you stand in his word, give, it shall be given back to you, good measures, pressed down, shaking together, run. men going to give on to your bosom. That truck have to be loaded up with food. You just think about that in your mind. Mm -hmm. Full with food to go out to the Bronx. 
plus the staff of people that go in the van to take care of the outreach there. Then have to be full for Staten Island on Tuesday. Then Wednesday is Manhattan. Then Thursday is Queens. All these, this 26 foot truck have to be packed with food. Then somewhere in Brooklyn, Red Hook, or somewhere wherever they decide to go. We was over there yesterday in Myrtleland. Over there, we mass over there in Bushwick. And then Saturday, you're leaving early in the morning to go to Saturday with that truck packed with food. You just think about that. You're buying two brand new trucks. When I asked God for the second truck, he said, why do you want a second truck? I said, well, one truck is bringing it in, one truck is taking it back out. He said, okay, I'll give it to you. Brand new truck, those trucks are running brand new trucks from the factory. Not to use brand new from the factory. You know, you're doing commercial, somebody like to make money. And huh? This is to give food out. You see, sometimes you read the scripture, but you don't believe what you read. Give, it shall be given back to you. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, running over, men will give unto bottom. As you get rid of lot, covering, veil, well, that, that lot could be religion, denomination, customs and tradition. You're locked with all that. So you move all around here. And you can see Blake 1, Blake 2, South Avenue, Riverdale, St. Mark's. You can see that. You can see retreat. You can see summer youth. You can see 10,000 toys. You can see turkey giveaway. You can see all that because you have that looking there. And always to help people, to bless them. Yeah. But remember, when you do it unto the least of these, you do it unto me. I was hungry and you feed me. I was thirsty. You give me a drink. I was naked and you clothed me. I was, listen, you housed me. I was in prison. You came. I was in hospital. You came. When did I do that, Lord? He said, because you do it unto the least of these, you do it unto me. Then the left side of that is, you didn't do it, you curse. So when we were speaking of all the people in night watch, going out to pick up all the people in night watch, we were speaking up Jesus. When we went to Rikers and bring all the people from prison, we were picking up Jesus. And think about this, sister Nati, you're going to hell because you didn't do that. You didn't see somebody hung, you didn't see them thirsty, you didn't see them naked, you just, you didn't do it. I am a visitor, come from a foreign country. I wasn't born here. I come here to go to my brother's wedding as a visitor. I never went back to my apartment in Montreal, Canada. But of course, they better go up past the go up there and see what's going on in my apartment up there. <laughs> Sister Pearl, you better go with him and see what's going on in my apartment up there. You want to take a trip up there, Pastor Steve? Go up there and see what's going on in the apartment. I left everything in the apartment right there and came down. Amen. Hallelujah. So we see that here in Isaiah 26. Look at the third verse. That will keep him in perfect peace. Woo! Look at that. You see, you keep your mind on him. I mean, Sister Avis, you go around in the morning and see that amount of people come around for breakfast. And you're looking from a natural point of view. Is there enough eggs? Is there enough sausages? Is there enough pancakes or whatever? In the natural. I mean, and you could, sister, you could freak out. Because you don't want the seniors not to get fed. You don't want those who most burn to not get fed. You want to make sure everybody's fed. And you're living in that environment all the time. And they could come, they can see a countenance. And you look like a loser. And you come down the kitchen with a long face. But you always have to look. You see a countenance. You see? At all the time, they have to look like that all the time because they, you, that could be contagious. Because you don't look like you're a winner. You're reading all the scripture, you don't look like that. We can have brand new trucks, we could buy a building, we can be on radio on television, we can do this, we can go out in the five hours, why can't we go? Take a little while for them to soil, but after they start seeing the results. Monday, the Bronx, Tuesday, Saturday, night, Wednesday, Manhattan, Thursday, Queen, they're seeing the result. Next section, we go look at those who got married here. Wait until we see that part of it. Am I an apostle? Look at it, they got a third verse. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is telling me because. Lean on me. Lean on me. How are you going to pay off a 30-year mortgage in three years? Lean on me. Amen. 
Everybody come have to be fed three meals a day. How are you going to do it? We're going to get close. We had one brother come to the ministry. We couldn't find shoes for this brother. Mike, I hope you're listening. His feet was this. And they couldn't get shoes for it. They're looking all but to get his. They couldn't. And he had to wrap his feet up with socks and so on. They couldn't get shoes to fit him. And my niece went looking all about, went somewhere in the village and find this last pair. She looked like Rumpel's kids. <laughs> couldn't get shoes to fit him at all. And she looked and looked. She said she nope, and just keep checking and find his shoes. Last pair of shoes. We had two pairs to fit Mike. Mike, I hope you listen. Come by here. Bring back the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll keep him in perfect peace. Who mine has stayed on me. Amen. Can you see that? Amen. Amen. Let's try to close with this. Second, first, second Timothy. Brother, sister in the Lord, I, I feel sorry for those. Those people that have run so those are social club. They have normal people. These are people coming out of living on the streets for years, out of prison, incarceration, from mental. So I was talking to Mike and last week with Mike and I talked. Mike said he comes straight from mental asylum. Somebody sent him to helping hands. That's a place for mad people. Go over there. They just take anybody. Second Timothy chapter one. Get these things down. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter one. And see what God is saying to us there. Having all these houses, brother, you don't know what it's like to pay all the bills, the rent and the light and the gas and all that. Now you're leaving that, now you're going to buy building, Sister Debbie from 326, then you'll buy 662, which is this one, 964, 1137, 1237, 1239, 95 likes the complex, 197, 536, big apartment here, and then Flatlands is the last one we bought to house all these people. You have somebody getting married every week, we'll be looking at that in the next segment and see what it was like in that kind of environment to do that. A normal person can't do that. You see, they have a congregation with rich people some rich uncle or some rich person in Wall Street. We didn't have that. We didn't have that. Everybody coming here, coming naked and broke. Whatever clothes they're coming with, we don't want that dirty clothes in the house. Some people come with no clothes at all. Pick up a lady from King's House, she has no clothes at all. I have to send some clothes for her. This guy Tyrone, he comes to me with a bathrobe and a pair of slippers. Next sister from Guyana, she comes with a long t-shirt, no panty, no bra. Wonderful people, eh? But somebody have to care about her. Somebody have to care about her. I was naked in your house. Take me in. And she become one of the top people in the ministry. Second Timothy, chapter one. I look at one verse. I wish I could give you verses. Look at the seven verse. As you go forth in your ministry, look at the seven verse. God had not given us a spirit of fear. Watch those butts. Watch those butts. But you see, he didn't give it up. But look at the other side of it. Look at the other side of it. He didn't give us a but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You see? That's the positive side. He didn't give you a spirit of fear. And you see, it will frighten you to see all these people coming in and then you, you, in your monkey mind, say, this guy will freak out. She may cause some problem up on the floor. You're looking at that and you're, you can think that way and you can see. But you see, God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but he gave you a spirit of power, of love, a song of mind. And all the time, I have to keep focus all the time. There's a certain decorum. They're looking at you all the time, the way you dress, the way you speak to people, the way you carry yourself. God, they're looking at you all the time. They're looking at your countenance. How you address the people, how you pose, how you, you look, your mannerism, how you answer people because they're black, because they're Puerto Rican, because they're white, because they're Jew. They're looking at you all the time. You see? You have to maintain that all the time, that personality, that person that could receive anybody. But you know, you have that face as a, mm. because you don't know where they're coming from, what they need. So you always have to have that receptive face coming. 
Some of you wasn't here a few weeks ago. We had Stephen come here and give his testimony. Some of you were here in Bible study. And he said when he came to the ministry, drunk, staggering drunk, his father out in him. And he remembered 20-something years ago. Doc, he remember what I said to him. I told him that I love him. You don't have to live like that. You're better than that. You would be a house leader. He, he, he gave his testimony here a few weeks ago. 26 years ago. What did you tell him when you seem drunk? Oh, you're stinking bum. <laughs> He'll remember that all the days that you call him a bum when you saw him at the door. But you remember I told him that I love him. Yes. And you go me up. And he became that. He became a, a house leader. We put him to run 197. You running 197, you playing with thousands of dollars in your hand every day. Steve was there. Now what do you tell him? That first person coming, that woman come through the door, that man. Are you going to take advantage of her sexually? Are you going to take advantage of because his family have some money? Are you going to treat everybody the same? Jews and Gentiles. You see, God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a song mind. Don't forget the ministries abroad, Africa, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic. Over 25 years in Africa and in Haiti. Look at this story here. Let's close with this. Time's up. Look at this story here. Am I an apostle? I'm asking the question. Look at 1 Kings. And look at this story here. 1 Kings chapter 17. Look at this. God is going to bless you with all these things. Read it not because it's there, but read it. And apply because God is calling some of you to do some things you're not doing. Him as busy as I am, I find time on a Wednesday to go out and take some sandwiches out to the needy. I'm busy. I'm an apostle. I have things to do. But I find times to rub shoulder, shoulders with the needy and not the greedy. Because you don't want to get yourself, you see, after a while you get so far away from people, you forget what it's like. You lost that touch. Yes. You forget what it's like to, mm -hmm. when somebody hungry, remember you was hungry when you was a child. Remember you were you. Yeah. And you, you, don't, you, you, you lost that touch. Now you're too much in the office and you, you're on the next level. You, you, don't know, you don't have the temperature of down there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So I go by there and I see them, you know, I look at that's somebody's son. This young girl, I say, look at you. You should be married to have a husband. She just put her head down. I look at this guy, I said, you know, I look at, that's somebody's son. That's somebody's daughter. But Doc, you, you come so far, you forget what it's like. You forget the early years. You forget Elton Street. You forget Blake 1 and Blake 2. Now you, you the man. I'm at the bank, you know, this, this guy said, I know your voice. He said, my mother listens to me every day. She's out in the car. Could you come? I'm an apostle. You can't do that. I said, sir, I go out there and talk to her, get some, and she said, I listen to every morning. But you say, get too big now, they can't talk to you. Well, you, you remember, take this, pastor. He didn't come to be served, but he come to serve. So when you go out there and give out the sandwich, that's what he would be doing, serving. And you, you can get out of that very easy and you carry yourself now. You have, uh, you, that's why I don't want to buy a very expensive car. <laughs> Is it working fine? The air condition working fine? The heat working? Did I have four wheels? Because you don't want to, you know, you get beside yourself. Now you're an expensive car. You don't want to go among these poor folks. They may sit on my car, you know. How do we get one cars? First Kings chapter 17, let's close with this. First Kings chapter 17. And look at this picture here. First Kings chapter 17, pick it up at the eighth verse. Am I an apostle? They're asking the question. Acts, no, first Kings chapter 17, pick it up at the eighth verse. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Arise and get thee to Zaphath, which belong to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a woman to there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zaphath. When he came to the gate of the city, behold, there was a widow woman there gathering sticks. He called her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in the vessel that I may drink. And she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in the hand. 
She said, as the Lord God liveth, I have not a cake that has a meal in the barrel and a little cruise in the, I, in the barrel. I go into dressing garden for my son. We go to dress it and eat and die. Now look at her negative. I'm going to make this and die. Now you have to change that from negative to positive. Now if you do what you say, you're going to die. But somebody take what you say negative and turn it to positive. Oh, look at it. As he was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in hand. She said, As the Lord God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. Behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go and dress them to me and my son, may eat it and die. Now we have to change that kind of, Everybody come in, that's where they come in. Now turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around. Huh? Verse 13, Elijah said, Fear not. God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power. And of love, the song of mine. He said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said. Make me there for a little cake first and bring it on to me, then make for the end for thyself. You see? Make it for me, give it to God first. Yeah. Then for yourself. Yeah. Buy the buildings to take care of God because remember when you pick up these people, you're picking up God. Yeah. So buy the building for God first, yeah. then yours after. Yeah. Huh? For thus said the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither the cruise of oil fail, until the Lord send rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, she and he and her house did it many days. Look at the 16 verse. Look at the 16 verse. Look at the 16 verse. Look at that verse. The barrel of wheel wasted not, neither the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which, which she spoke by Elijah. Amen. Well, you see, because we did that, that's why the house never ran out of food. Yeah. That's why we never want to close. You always have clothes for somebody. Yeah. And you do that, you'll always have meal, you'll always have clothes, you'll always keep going, you'll always support Africa. Even. Stand to your feet, give yourself a hand. Yeah. Hallelujah, glory to God. Amen. Yeah. Amen, amen. Come on, make some noise. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah. Make some united noise. Yeah. Hallelujah, glory to God. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I want to give those that are viewing on television and listening on radio an opportunity to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. The Bible says, not my wish that any should perish. He doesn't want anybody going to hell. Hell was not made for you. Hell was made for the devil and his angels. You don't have to go to hell. All you have to do is to say yes. You don't have to follow any form, quit your job, leave your husband, your wife, ban your kids, give up your apartment, change your name, follow the form, bring some money. All you have to do is to say yes. As you say yes, you leave the kingdom of darkness. I'm drinking of light. If you're already saved, we want you to stand proxy for somebody who's not saved. But if you're not saved, stand for yourself. Repeat these words I made from the bottom of your heart. Heavenly Father, Heavenly you Father. said in your holy word, you whosoever come to me, come to I'll in no way cast out, I'll but I'll take them in. So I, take them in. so I come to you. So come to you. you didn't cast me out, you but you took me in. Took me and in. I thank you. Thank you. Romans, 10, Romans 10, verse 13. Verse Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I call upon your name. So I'm now saved. Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. Where the mouth confession is made unto salvation. But with the heart man believe it unto righteousness. So I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus that he died, went to hell, spent three days and three nights just for, me, just for me because I confess that with my mouth and I believe that in my heart I'm now saved I now become the righteousness of God in Christ 2 Corinthians 5.21 Jesus you represent me in heaven and I will represent you on earth Jesus I thank you for what you did for me on Calvary, shedding your blood to redeem me from the curse of the law, spiritual death, poverty, and sickness. Satan, you're no longer my Lord. Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. I'll live for him. I'll serve him. I'll study his words. I'll be a good example for all to see. And I thank you. In your name I pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Give them a hand. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
Amen. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of his mouth of God. What is he saying? What food is say physical body? The word of God says spirit. As you feed your body, make time and feed your spirit. Because you are spirit, you live in a body and have a soul. Feed your body, feed your spirit also. That's number one. Number two, don't forsake the assemblies of your brethren. Christians need to be with Christians of like precious faith. If you're not with Christians, you're not with Christians. People are not saying so on God eating the Bible. Say, watch what you hear. What you hear will affect your faith. That's number two. Number three, be loving one to another. You're a Christian, not hate people because they're black or white. They're born in this country, or born abroad. I'm a belief different than yours. You can disagree if you want to, but you don't have to hate them. Hate is of the devil. God is love. If you're not loving one to another, your faith is not going to work. Faith working by love. By distant man, you know, my disciple, because you have love one to another. That's number three. Number four, pay your tithes. Very important. 10% of the money you work for. That's not your money. God said to bring all the tithes in the store that we meet in my house and prove me now here, which said a lot of hosts. I'll not open the windows of heaven and pour you all bless me in order to receive it. You don't pay a tithe. The Bible says you are cursed. With a curse. With a man rob God, how did we rob thee? If you couldn't live on 90% of the money you work for, you cannot live on 100%. I tried it. It didn't work. Give God his. Keep you all be blessed and become a blessing to others. In order to receive Christ as Lord and Savior, we give you some basic instruction to get started. But that's not all. That's a good place to get started. You need to read your Bible on a daily basis. Don't wait until you come to church or go to a primitive crusade to read your Bible. Read your Bible every day. Ask God to lead you to a church that will feed you spiritually. Don't go to a church because your friends going there because there's a church down the block or across the street. That may be so, but that may not be so. Ask him to lead you. When he leads you, they submit to that authority. Be a blessing. Death, God will bless you. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time that you have given us. Thank you for the opportunities and privileges. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, to make all this possible. Thank you for the victory in Jesus. This victory in others. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory because it all belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Glory to God. Give yourself a hand. Be seated. I think they're going to do ties.